Hey folks, this is Office Hours with Desiree and Malcolm. This show is intended to peel back the curtain on the home mortgage industry and make the whole process more approachable and more accessible to everyone. Desiree Ragusi currently serves as the Business Development Manager for Fortis Mortgage, and among other things, she is responsible for educating current and future clients on the ways in which the right mortgage can help make their home ownership dreams into a reality. Malcolm Etheridge recently began working with the team at Fortis Mortgage as a strategic consultant, where he lends his expertise and perspective as a certified financial planner in helping homeowners with unique and complex borrowing needs understand and navigate the mortgage landscape. In each episode, the pair will discuss a particular mortgage topic, share real-world examples, and give you the perspective of the lender, underwriter, and loan originator. So with that, Desiree, Malcolm, take it away. Hey folks, thanks for joining us. I'm Malcolm Etheridge, that's Desiree Ragusi, and this is Office Hours. Today's topic, we're talking about qualifying for a mortgage as a small business owner. And to get us kicked off here, I think it's important to lay out just the reason why we're talking about this topic in the first place and how it came up, right? And so I want to share just with folks that uh, you and I were having a conversation uh, a, a little bit ago about a trend we were noticing where folks were had gone out on their own, started a business, and then all of a sudden, you know, COVID happens and everyone wants to buy a single family home all at the same time, right? The housing market is on fire. And some of those same newly minted entrepreneurs were disappointed to find out that they couldn't make that jump that everyone else was making uh, simply because they had not established themselves on paper just yet. And so that's really the crux of what we're talking about in in today's Office Hours episode. Um, And it's one that I think is really important because it's one of those things that people don't always think about until they're already in it. And now it matters. And and there, there happens to be some uh, heartburn, I'll say, around this one. So, as a as a general rule of thumb, um, you know, to 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 get us, you know, started down that road, how long does someone need to have owned their business before a lender will consider uh, will consider them a good candidate for a new loan? Yeah, good question. Uh, two years. So, two years, twenty four months. That's pretty much the standard you can count on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do want to point out, you talked about being a small business owner. This can also apply to self-employed. And then when we talk about small business owner, but basically an owner of a company where you own 25% or more Mm. of the business. So just to to clarify a little bit further. So if I own 25% of the business, but I don't work in that business necessarily on a daily basis, does that still count? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So any types of businesses or industries where lenders feel safer lending to those particular entrepreneurs? That's a good question. And, and no, really, it just comes down to, can you pay the mortgage, right? <laughs> it is, that's all they care about. So it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're selling clothing online or you are a consultant. It's, it all goes back to being able to pay that monthly payment every month. Even so for folks that are in like, I don't know, arts and entertainment, maybe they're musicians or uh, actors no. or anything like that. No, it just, it may make the process of the documentation and the types of, um, you know, documents that you may be required to show and how you do that and how you get paid. That may be a little bit more tricky for you, but really at the end of the day, the industry and job, it it doesn't matter. Good to know in case I ever pursue my dreams of being a a Broadway uh, actor. act. I guess at least I know I can still have a house. That is. Perfect. <laughs> just, just make sure that you send me some tickets, but make sure again, don't try to refinance or buy a new house um, until after two years, Malcolm. Okay. Fair it just enough. makes the process a little smoother. Um, I will say there are some cases, again, this would probably fall into more of the non-traditional mortgage category um, and, and like a manually underwritten situation where mm-hmm. They could take 12 months of being self-employed um, or uh, being an owner in a company, but that is typically only going to happen for those who say, um, I'll use the truck driver example. You were a W-2 employee and you were a truck driver for 15 years and you finally saved up enough money and said, I'm going to go out on my own. I'm going to buy my own truck. I'm going to do it all on my own now. And you have one year with that. That's like a direct industry change where nothing's shifted other than you pay yourself now. Right. Mm, So keep that in mind. There are certain situations that that could, you could see um, less than two years, 
but it's not, it's not going to happen for everybody. So income is the same or similar, but the industry is the same for sure. And that is the one caveat that maybe gets you there sooner than two years. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they want to see that, you know, the business, right? It makes sense. I, I get it. And yeah. I appreciate that you get a little bit of credit for, for being a veteran in the, the space, right? And having right. some years under your belt in that same arena probably means that you have a pretty good chance of success too, right? So I get mm-hmm. it. That that makes perfect sense. But speaking of underwriting and sticking with that same theme, are there any any types of documents that an underwriter might request from a business owner that they don't normally require from a W-2, you know, employee, same truck driver example, maybe for example. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you could be requested to show your uh, profit and loss statements, Mm -hmm. uh, balance sheets. Um, You could, in some cases we're seeing more now just because of COVID, you may actually have to show your bank statements, whereas Hmm. before they didn't require that. Um, So I think, be prepared for all of the, all of the documents that you would have to show in, to run a successful business, I think in any, you know, in any form, whatever the industry, um, be prepared to have to show those because they want to know where the business is, where it's going. Um, are you good at keeping track of things too? Right. And that may be, there also could be opportunity where they, items that had to be taken out for say depreciation, they could actually count back in towards your income because Hmm. it's not necessarily coming out of your bank account every month. But basically the same documents that your banker asks for every year, right. To, to maintain (laughs) your, your good standing with them. It sounds like is, is the same stuff that you've got to be prepared to turn into a a mortgage underwriter uh, in order to make you a loan. Is that, is that safe to say? That's safe to say. Yep. Any other steps that a business owner could take, you know, to make themselves more attractive to a lender long before they ever even request the loan? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think it it's really about keeping yourself organized, right? I, I think that we're going to have this conversation more and more in the upcoming years with COVID. I think mm-hmm. people either got laid off or they didn't want to have to go back into the office. And so they became online businesses and be ready. If you do have to show that you are a legitimate registered business, make sure that you did that paperwork, right? I I'm not saying that I have seen it yet, but it could be something that does get requested in the future of you. Um, so I think it, you know, maybe making sure you're registered with the state or the, the, the security of state department, right. As a, as a company, um, And obviously, if you do have the opportunity, always, always hire a third party professional to, you know, do your taxes. Um, If there is an opportunity where you can have someone audit, like if we, if you get requested to have audited documentation, um, it's going to be a pain if you didn't have it previously done. But I, again, I understand that that is a, that's a huge expense for a small business or someone who's self-employed, I guess, just set yourself up in the most organized way possible to make sure that you are ready. If something outside of the norm does get requested for your loan, um, when it is in the underwriting stage, that it's easy for you to pull, or it would be easy for you to get a third party to come in and take a look at it as quickly as possible. Cause obviously time is of the essence when you're, you know, you're, you're in the process area in escrow on a home. Um, and just be able to present it all and keep track. Don't, you know, think that two years ago, you don't need to keep anything. Yeah. Um, I think that's any company rule, right? You should be holding on to documents for at least five years. So I've also seen that where they, it was a struggle to find something from three years ago. So it could be two, but in some cases for some self-employed or business owners, the underwriters may require three years. So again, be prepared for it. People are going to hear this and think that I put you up to that because I am <laughs> uh, you know, in my in my day job as a financial planner. One of the things I'm always on my business owner clients about is like keeping good records of every single document of every single major transaction, major move they've made 
and at nauseum probably to 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 the point that people are like okay i get it like i need to know where this this quarter's p l went but like you know give me a break and i'm like no like <laughs> we've got to talk to your banker about renewing your credit line and they're going to ask for it i know they're going to ask for it you can't delay filing your taxes this year because you got this other thing you want to do and you're going to need the tax return to be able to prove it. like all those different things that you're saying are things that I'm constantly harping on with business owner clients. They just want to run their business. They don't want to have to worry about maintaining financial records or tax situations or any of that kind of stuff. And I completely get it. So to your point, my recommendation would be to involve a third party as soon as you can possibly afford one to mm -hmm. take care of things like managing your, your payroll making sure that you've got decent financial statements uh, on an annual basis at the minimum, those kind of things, because that's, you know, that's typically what comes up that, that causes that heartburn that I was talking about that. Um, so there's some hurt feeling sometimes when yeah. you, you delay planning and you get into it and you find out that, you know, uh, can't quite get there. So beyond that, obviously keeping your credit score high is one thing I thought you would mention. Um, well, and that was uh, my my next one is obviously keeping your credit score high, but yeah. keep in mind like missed or late payments. That's a huge one, and I don't think that some people recognize. We will see it yeah. um, when we're going to pull uh, uh, your credit report, and there may be instances where you're going to have to explain it. So again, do you want to cause yourself heartburn? It is the little things sometimes that set you up for the big benefits. Mm -hmm. So keeping your payments on time, whether that is your auto loan, your an auto for the business, right? Um, your payments uh, for your small business loan, your, if you have a leased space, right? And you're going to be paying that lease every month, make sure everything's paid on time. That will help keep that credit score nice and healthy. Would you also agree that paying yourself a consistent income uh, is going to matter here, right? You have some folks that yeah. seasonal businesses, maybe I pay myself once a year or once a quarter even, and it's really lumpy. Uh, would you agree that maybe paying yourself monthly or biweekly is probably a good way to go and being able to prove yourself as credit worthy to a lender? Well, I will say that it is, I keep going back to your phrase, it's going to be less heartburn. <laughs> so yeah. there are ways that we can use different softwares and tools to configure and figure out how much of your income we can use. Um, you know, a lot of averages go into that. So if we have to take a look at a two or three year average for you being a self-employed borrower, we may have to do that, but it makes it a lot easier if we only have to do 12 months because you paid yourself consistently, we can easily track it. It's just less work involved. Yeah. That's, it, it doesn't necessarily make you a better candidate or not. It's just less work. So are the loan to value and debt to income requirements the same or uh, are those more strict for a business owner than they are versus, you know, a person or two people applying that have a traditional W-2 income? Well, I think that a self-employed borrower is always just going to be a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say difficult, but I just think there's going to be a little bit more involved than somebody mm -hmm. who's a W-2 employee. That's just a fact. Um so, but as far as debt to income and your loan to value levels, if you're going to apply for a conventional mortgage, it's going to be the same regardless. Okay. Those, those guidelines don't change depending on how you get paid. And you and I had conversation before where you educated me on the fact that I could actually, as a business owner, apply for a loan and use my bank statements as proof of income in some instances that you're uh, seeing happening more frequently. Could you share a little bit about that? Yeah. And I think we may have talked about it on a previous podcast, but it's really would fall into a, um, a non-traditional mortgage category. So there is what we call bank statement income, right? So what the underwriters would do would exactly what it sounds, they would take 12 months of your bank statements mm -hmm. and they're going to go through with a fine tuned comb and they're going to see exactly what you're bringing in every month. And they're going to take an average of that, um, of those bank account statements and they'll use whatever they find to qualify you towards, um, towards your mortgage. So yeah, there absolutely is an opportunity to do that. And that may be a great fit for some self-employed bar borrowers versus going uh, traditional uh, or you know, conventional conforming. Yeah. 
And can you share maybe a success story where a client approached you, maybe even thinking they, you know, wanted to go with a 30 year fixed right to, to that end. And maybe you helped educate them on how, uh, as a business owner, right. A non-traditional mortgage may have been the way to go, or even they came to you thinking, you know, I own a business. I'm never going to be able to get approved for a mortgage. Mm. Uh, you know, it's the same old same and, and maybe someone twisted their arm into talking to you and they were pleasantly surprised that they could, in fact, you know, buy that home as a as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I think that it's probably the latter we get. We do. You hear it a lot. I'm self-employed. I'm never going to qualify for a mortgage. And that really just isn't the case. Again, I say this a lot. Leave yourself time to plan. That's what it's involved. Find a mortgage professional that you can sit down with and come up with a plan. Be able to supply all your documents. If you were to work with myself, I would ask for all these documents up front. I'm going to think of anything that the underwriters are going to want to see. And I'm going to look at it all first because I want to take a look at it and figure out what we can do for you. And um, if we do need to go a non-traditional mortgage route, then we, we do that. But there typically are options unless there's something that either due to credit or the way that you're paying yourself, or of course, with any new startup, you may just not be making any money yet. And Mm -hmm. that's nothing that we can change. Sure. Um, And so we just come up with a game plan that this is what you're going to need to do. And this is what the, what, how much income you're going to need to start bringing in. And maybe that's going to take you another year, two years or three years. Right. But I think that there's, oh, there's always an opportunity to plan. So just sit down and have a conversation with a mortgage professional about that. Awesome. Well, that'll do it for us on this episode. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for another episode of Office Hours. I'm Malcolm Etheridge. She's Desiree Ragusi. And Desiree, remind people where they can find you if they have questions or want more uh, info after this goes live. Yeah, absolutely. So you can email me at Desiree at FortisMortgage.com. Uh, Desiree Ragusi on LinkedIn and um, Fortis Mortgage. That's our handle on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Awesome.